Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God, Nyla Simone. We are The Breakfast Club, and we got a special guest in the building. We got Lola Brook. Welcome. Uh, 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 uh. Tell them your real name, though. Tell them it's Lola Brook, because you've been booked and busy all year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been a little crazy, but I ain't complaining. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. You're getting money. <laughs> No, I'm making money. Okay, you're making money. You're making, <laughs> making money. I'm making, making money. money. Making okay. money. New album, Dennis' Daughter, is out right now. Explain that title. Dennis' Daughter. Okay, so I'm the only child, mm-hmm. raised by a single parent, my mom. But I used to hang out with my father here and there. He'd pick me up from school, and everybody would always say, Little D. Mm-hmm. They would call me Little D when they see me with my father or Dennis' Daughter or whatever mm-hmm. fits. They would always just add him into my nickname, mm-hmm. and I loved it so much, so... Now I get to like relive it because my father is deceased now, so mm-hmm. I can't get that those moments back. Mm-hmm. But I'm like creating new moments, and I still feel like he's still around. So mm. was that like that. the inspiration behind the song "Vacant Heart" as well? "Vacant Heart" was me just venting. I I felt empty, mm-hmm. pockets empty, heart mm-hmm. empty. Your soul feel empty sometimes. Like, Man. you just don't know. Mm-hmm. So that got to be an old record, because your pockets is not empty. <laughs> you, you and her pockets heavy today now. Like, Jesus. <laughs> like, what's going on? Heavy. But, I like to see but, people doing good. But mm-hmm. is it an older record, though? Because it, it sounds like, it, you know, it was a time before now. Honestly, I did that record this year. So basically, this whole entire project is me just reflecting on my life as mm-hmm. I'm coming up. So... I finally felt comfortable enough to finally just talk about my true feelings and what I was mm-hmm. going through. So Vacant Heart is pretty, pretty new. Was that a tough song to record? It was it was so fast. Wow. Probably like 15, 30 minutes, like straight through. Mm. But that's oh. just how you record. Cause I've been in the studio with you. You take like five minutes, then go lay it, and then you're done. And it's crazy because I thought I was taking long. I'm like, Dad, Nyla in here. She probably like, girl, you not, you still not finished yet? No, you're, you're, you're a beast with that. But, but uh, emotionally, and, was it tough though? I wasn't in the room. See, when I'm recording, I don't really be in the room with a lot of people. Gotcha. So I'm very much comfortable. And whoever's in the room, mm-hmm. I probably done been in a vulnerable space around them already. So it doesn't matter. It's cool. And then the engineer, I don't see the engineer. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, <laughs> Jesus. So I'm cool. Did now, you? let's start from the beginning. So for people that don't know Lola Brooke, where did you where did you get your, your start from? Why did you start rapping? And how did you get your deal? Okay, so... Honestly speaking, the people's chose. Well, I always say rap chose me. I didn't choose rap. It was just always there. And the people's, like the citizens of New York City was just like, yo, look, listen, you nice. I know this is a hobby for you, but you should take it serious. So what were you doing between that? Because you said it was a hobby. So what else were you doing? Just working a nine to five. Like I was always a nine to five girl. As soon as I turned 18, the first thing I did was go get a job. What was your first job? Little Caesars. <laughs> pizza. Pizza, pizza. I already. Ah, Little Caesars. God is the funniest. God is so amazing. God sends the humor. Man. I already. Yeah, so uh, I would just go to the studio just for a hobby. I started taking it serious. Um, it's another artist from Brooklyn. His name Bleezy. Mm-hmm. He wanted to do a song with me, so I featured a song on him. I went to the studio. I ended up bumping into his team, um, Team 80, uh, my mentor 80. I met him. And then just being around, knowing like, oh, okay, this is how music videos go. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is how the studio process go. Like, you get to, like, relax. Because when I was going to the studio... Two hours, that's it. It was like $40 an hour. I got $80 and that's it. But <laughs> with them, they was just so relaxed and everybody was just so creative and I fell in love with it. And I was like, wow, so this really is my destiny. Mm-hmm. So now when you, when you got your deal, so I remember, shout to Sav, I went to uh, college with Sav. He called early on and was like, I got this artist, she's dope. And he was calling everybody that he knew. So, so how did you get with Sav and how did you finally get that deal? Sav stalked me. <laughs> uh, uh, now, now, Sav, of course, like I went to college, Fat Man Scoop's brother as well, for people that don't know. He yes. used to work for Def Jam. And... <laughs> I didn't know no, that. You didn't know that? Yeah, I didn't know that. I hate you youngin' yeah. sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I really despise you youngin'. used to work at Def Jam with the Jeezy and, and work for, for, I don't know for Ross for a while. I know who Siblings and Siblings. I know who Fat Man Scoop is and I know who Sav is. That's crazy. I knew that regular. I don't even know. I was in South Carolina and knew that for some reason. I mean, I'm, When you was in South Carolina, I was 10, but go ahead. Whatever. Damn. I still knew that, though. You know what I mean? But go ahead. Yeah, he he stalked so Sav me. So Sav stalked you. He was, he was playing a and all. He was like, "Yo, what's going on, man? You dope? 
I need to know, like, who, like, where, where the squad at? I need to speak to them and let's figure this out. It just felt so natural, though, um, meeting with Sav and Arista. They didn't want to change me mm -hmm. or my team or what I brought to the table. They thought that it was just a good idea to just keep everything the same. So me just being me and I don't have to change nothing about me, that was the... That was like a, a relief for me. Did you have any fear? Because you know they they always say a, a woman artist, woman rapper can't pop unless she got like a big male cosign, especially from another male rapper. See, um, that's not my case. But if mm -hmm. it was, so mm -hmm. be it. Mm -hmm. And we're like, also not in that era. But, and then, listen, the ladies is doing a thing. Mm -hmm. Ladies is doing anything. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, this era, this era doesn't really have that as much as past eras. That's true. But back to uh. Meeting with Sav, I will say. Sav, oh, Sav, 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 I'm so sorry. Didn't know Sav. he was Fat Man School. Brother, don't know his name. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Nyla. Meeting with Sav. This is Go crazy. Yeah, this is disrespect Sav, for the OGs oh in this game no, is disgusting. Uh-oh. Right. Right. All I wanted to know was, because well, you were saying how he called everybody he knew, and he kept saying, like, this record, don't play with it. I know it's old, but I know it's a big record. Were you against repushing the record? Because I feel like artists kind of be over and on to the next. Like, were you excited about the push, or, like, how, would, how did that go? I was excited because who going to say not to what? It didn't matter how long it took That's or real. how old it was. It's new to somebody. It, it's new to somebody, mm -hmm. and this was my real chance. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't gonna turn my chance down. I waited this. I waited for this moment all my life. And you, you got such a big voice. Is that something that's natural, or something you practice because you know you you are smaller, so you wanted to sound big? I mean, when I'm mad, I talk like this. <laughs> 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 it's my mad voice. My rap voice is my mad voice. Word, word, word. So it's still me. Mm. Are you talking to Charlamagne? Yo. <laughs> 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 you want to go back to Little Caesars? Let's talk Little Caesars. Let's talk more Little Caesars, baby. No. All right. Yo, <laughs> back to your rap voice. The, the ad lib, because I feel like your ad lib is infamous. The uh, 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 uh. How did you come up with that? I always wanted a stamp. I always wanted a stamp to... I'm small, so I always want to be heard. So I was thinking to myself, like, I need to find out a way to be heard without being seen or mm. my presence is not in the room. And I sat with it for a very long time. So it started off as, uh-huh, I do, uh-huh, uh-huh. Then when don't play with it, when I listen to the beat, it just came out, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm like, just stutter it or something. Mm -hmm. And it felt good. So, and then now it's, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's like my Batman call. Regardless of the voice, you, you still have a big personality. Like when you walk yeah. in the room, you can feel your presence. When did you first become aware of that presence? School? My my mom been telling me that since I came out the womb. Like, let's leave my child alone. Like, they act like they... I would go any... My mom would take me on trips and people would be so fascinated with me and my mom would be so confused. Like, why they keep walking up to you? Like, just asking you random questions or just, mm -hmm. just, just attachment. Like, mm -hmm. people would have attachment to me when I walk in a room with my presence. But I just... I never thought anything of it. I just was being myself and... Little did I know I was a whole artist. <laughs> did you have relationships with, with a lot of the Brooklyn artists beforehand? Because when the record started to pop, I started seeing so many artists bringing you out on their sets, whether it was Kim or whoever it may be. Did you have those relationships beforehand? Um, No, music broke me into these relationships. Mm -hmm. Uh, See, me, I was so more, I was more focused on my craft. I wouldn't like hang out so much. I was always in the studio, literally sleeping, waking up in the studio. So I didn't really get to mingle as much as other artists did. Mm -hmm. I was just working on my craft. So when I finally felt like I had a good body of work to put out, then that's when I was going outside and then don't play with it, start taking off. And I started building my relationship. What artist there. supported you the most when you first started popping? Um, but Before or? Right when the Don't Play With It came out. It's a mixture of a, it's, I don't, I can't even call that. What I can say is Meek called it out from jump, like 2017. Meek was like my first co-sign ever. Mm. So just a tweet, like he just tweeted it or something? What do you say? Yeah, like he would comment on my stuff. He would post me, his his peoples would post me as well. He would um, say it um, in his stories or just anything like that. Any way to be supportive um, within social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Did he try to sign you too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you was already signed at the time? Um, yeah. It was like when the when the when the talks really came down to it, it was like, 
It's already done. It's already done, bro. Damn. So, yeah. On Vacant Heart, you said you was heartbroken when your mom left for Atlanta. Yes. Why didn't you go with her? Or did you? I don't Because that was, I felt like that was, that was my moment to grow. Mm. I wanted to have some type of growth. I wanted her to trust me. I wanted her to feel safe to what do what makes her happy because mm. I can't stop my mom from this is this was one of her dreams. You know, a New Yorker always go to get a house in Atlanta. <laughs> 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 this was part of my mom's dream. And even if I ain't understand it, that wasn't my place to like mm. not give her the support. So I just was like, you know what? When she left, I cried like a baby. How old are you? Um, yeah, how how long has it been? I don't know, but this was like three years ago, three, four years ago. But as I'm saying, as a rapper... I thought she was going to say like 10 years ago. She said like <laughs> no, two, it was like three, ago. four years ago. No, it was like three, four years ago. But it, as a rapper, Atlanta's like the mecca of hip-hop right now. So you didn't want to, you know what, like maybe I should go to Atlanta too and Yeah, see but what's up. I'm the only child. You got to understand, my mom treats me like I'm... She's going to treat me like a baby forever. And I had to stand on my two feet and figure it out. So I didn't know what I was going to do. She was telling me, like, she left the, uh, she left the apartment for me. We was on Section 8. Mm-hmm. I ended up being on Section 8. So I still couldn't even really, like, pay my rent. But I was telling her, like, I'm good. Like, I got an income. Like, I'm I'm straight. Like, you could go. And she was like, okay. But it was all. It was so tough. You, oh, she and, was by yourself? Yeah. Damn. And Section 8, now my pocket's straight. You wrote that ball yet? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, that uh, Section Eight is in there somewhere, somewhere in this project. You gonna hear Section Eight? It definitely is an adjustment when you leave home or when home leaves you. I, I think yeah. people like sleep on that, but it definitely pushes you. Like when my parents left me for college, like they moved me in and left. It didn't really resonate. Like, oh, y'all are leaving. Like, I I gotta stay here and do everything myself. But yes, you're never mm-hmm. too old to to like have for that reality check. It's like the little things that I peep with my moms that she would. She wouldn't think that I know how to cook. Mm-hmm. And I had to show her, like, one Thanksgiving, I, I, like, cook Thanksgiving meal. Like, no, I know how to cook. So that right there was me thinking to myself, oh, she don't, like, she think I'm still her her, her baby. Mm-hmm. Like, she don't know that I'm grown and I can take care of myself. That was like, yo, you know what? Mm-hmm. Just leave, mom. I don't want you to, but. You got to okay. stand at a stool? Stand on a stool at the stool? Or is it? Yo. <laughs> ask him, if, ask him if he got to stand. Ask him if he got to do the same. <laughs> you know he do. I'm taller than you right now. I don't look at my that. chin. Look, look, look. <laughs> you know how I do. There you yeah, go. She, she, tall, she taller. She is taller. She is taller. So what, you know how I do it. So what did you do with your first check when you got your first check? Because you was on Section Eight. What did you do when you got your first check? Where did it go? Mm, my first check. I let go Section Eight. <laughs> <laughs> I let Smart. go Section Eight, and I got an apartment, and I saved up. I saved my money. Like I didn't go splurging or anything mm-hmm. like that. I gave my moms a couple dollars too, of course, mm-hmm. and that was it. What was your first check off? Was it a, a show? Was it screaming? What was it? Advanced? I was getting. It was like brown paper bags, okay. you know, like go hostings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, my last question off a of vacant heart because I know we keep talking about this record, but I feel like mm-hmm. it was just the most vulnerable. But you said dealing with a man who ain't chipping in with the bills. Mm. I feel like a lot of women can relate to that <laughs> at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I mean, everybody go through their circumstances. And I don't judge. But if I'm going through it and you going through it with me and I feel like there's no changes, I could do bad by myself. So... I'm working with you. I I don't judge. Mm-hmm. I feel like you got potentials, but obviously you don't see it ain't for yourself. So I just gotta walk away from it. And your experience is different because you went through it. You was on Section Eight. Yes. You hustled. You got some bread. Got off Section Eight. You want to see people take those steps. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. I was on Section Eight while I, I just I I was on Section Eight, and I'm telling y'all I couldn't even pay my rent. Yeah. And then I'm I'm dealing with somebody that's like. They not they not a bad person. They actually a good person, but they trying to figure themselves out. Mm-hmm. And as they try to figure themselves out, it's dulling me down as well too because I'm trying to figure it out. But so maybe we need a break from each other and we need to go our separate ways to figure out what can we do in mm-hmm. life to like motivate us. Mm. But I I can't I can't keep doing this because the growth is not is it's not Slowing you down. Slowing, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you run into men who tried to suppress uh, your your rise? Like they saw you growing, they saw you 
becoming who you are, who, who you are, and did they try to stifle that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was with you when you was on Section Eight. Don't act brand new now. I've yo, honestly, it's not a lot of guys that could. No, mm-mm. I don't play them type of games. Like growing up, my mom didn't have me around a lot of men, and if I was around someone, they was doing something for me and her. Mm-hmm. So, um. No, nah, I didn't really have. I don't really have those stories with a lot of guys saying I did this for you. I was very mm-hmm. independent, mm-hmm. very independent, and not saying that I don't want no help, but I'm not. I'm not begging for no help though. Mm-hmm. How are you navigating through the industry? We hear all these horror stories of women trying to do things and and men trying to take advantage of that. Have you had any of those horror stories? No, I'm mm-hmm. around so many men. Like men, men don't get the chance to touch me. Mm-hmm. I'm like really well protected and. I'm very much blessed to even have that experience because I don't know what I would do if I was in the industry and people was like hitting off me for business or anything like that. But I've been well protected, so shout outs to shout outs to my team and the bros. Hey man, we love that. Well, we know you got angels, obviously. Yes. Um and in Dear Dennis, you're talking about having a conversation with one of them, mm-hmm. which is your dad. When was the last time he visited you in like a dream or something like that? Yeah, that's why I'm like, what's up with him? It's been a little, it's been a little minute. Like I, I can't even. You think you just have too much going it. on, so you can't receive it? Yeah, it it might be that, but um, sometimes I think to myself, maybe he feel like you got it, like you don't, you don't need me yet. Like I come when when I feel like you need some type of reinsurance. Mm. Those would be the worst ones. Like I, I've had, like my grandmother passed in 06 and I had like two dreams about it. I'd be feeling the same way. Like, what's up? Where what's, you at? See? You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't show me that you're still here, but then, you know, right. yes. don't come around. It'd be like certain signs that you feel, mm-hmm. but you like, I need to see you and feel you a little bit more. Like, where you at? But it's been a little minute, but I still feel him though. Like, I like it's days where I, be, I, I stop and I be like, all right, I got you. You ever talk to a medium? No. You ever thought about it? No. <laughs> yeah, that, you don't know what? <laughs> <Mm-mm>. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, hold on. Uh-uh. What's the happy? <laughs> yeah. But I actually spoke to a medium once by accident. Somebody just came up to me and started volunteering information. That happened to me. Okay. And then another time, I actually scheduled an appointment with one. Much later in my life. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm too. I'm too nervous to to do that. I'm, I'm with you. I ain't nope. So, so what happened when they walked up on you? Did they, where were you at? About to do the BET cipher. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. It was in New York. Um, oh, LA. LA. He was t- he was telling me about myself, but then after a while, I was getting a little scared because it was just. So when he walked up to you, was you in the store or just, hotel? He, no, he was in like in. Uh, I don't know if he was part of. He told me who he was too, and I just got kind it's of part of the BET cipher. No, he just he. I don't. I don't even remember. <laughs> was he right about some things? Did he? Yeah, he was right about some things about myself. And then after a while, he was going a little too crazy for me. <laughs> like I was just like, uh, uh-uh. uh. Like he would say things like, um, you're very nurturing, and um, you take care of people like if your mom, if you're their mom, and you worried about more of them than yourself. And it was so true. So mm. I was like, oh, damn. That's kind of big. Not though. right now. I got to get this. Yeah, this I'm like, Mr. I'm about to do a freestyle for the <laughs> <laughs> You talk about, like, I do not feel like crying on that stage. What's wrong with you? You don't got nobody to rescue you from situations like that, though? Yeah, like, where were you, Tree Sav? <laughs> yeah, where <laughs> This is what I'm saying. I'm, I, <laughs> Y'all need a cold or something. Like, <laughs> like yo. Blink your eyes three up? times or something. My eyes started like, I said, oh, here we go. But he was, honestly, it felt kind of genuine in mm-hmm. a sense, though. So... Mm-hmm. I didn't really trip. I was more of being a listener than like trying to brush him off. You were. But then after a while, I was like, "Okay, Miss, I'm not here to be emotional. I'm here to put my feet on the on the gate right now." Curious. So, what is the hardest part about being a new artist? The hardest part about being a new artist is when, in all in reality, you really an old artist. <laughs> so it's like. What you feel like you've been putting out, a lot of people don't know. So you have to, like, cross that bridge and know that it's a billion people in the world that Mm -hmm. don't know your story. And you have to retell it, retell it every time and don't be annoyed by it because Mm -hmm. people are learning you. So How how was the tour been going? I know you went on a a little HBCU run. It's been lit. Mm -hmm. College kids, 
what? Man, they show you so much love. And then on top of that, it just feels so good because I always wanted to go away for college, but oh, I didn't get the chance to. I went to college, but. What school? McAvis. Is Megan Evers a, a HBCU? Somebody, I argue with somebody. I don't think it is. Somebody told me it is. I is read it? it was. I don't think it, it is. is. No, I don't know. No, if it I don't is. think so. I read it. Is it? I read it. Yes, we the asking you. Then you went. Then it can't I be. I went, but you gotta understand. I dropped out. Oh. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I, um, twenty. All right, so I graduated high school twenty twelve. I took a year off, and I went twenty fourteen. And then it was just over. And that was over. Rap after. Yeah, that. I don't think yeah. It was I, I had to sit down with my mom. I was like, look, listen. This ain't for me. I'm, I don't think this is my destiny, Ma. I, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to come back. I told her, like, I'm going to take a year off from school, and then I'm going to go to college. But, Ma, I don't think, I don't know. I feel like I'm important to the world. I was like, I feel like I'm a star in some way. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to come back and tell you. And she was like, okay. Dope. Love yeah. that. Now, one of my favorite records on the project so far, I feel like it changes often, but don't get me started with Koi. So fun. I want to talk about how you guys collaborated because you guys are two of the biggest in the tri-state right now. Okay, so Koi is a ball of energy just mm -hmm. like me. Very petite. Um, it's another artist on there as well. Um, she started off as a songwriter, Nisha. Mm -hmm. I got Nisha on there. She's from Jersey as well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a New York crossover to Holland to New Jersey because it's the East Coast and just united and then we all petite girls so I knew it would look so good on the screen you know like I didn't really see too much petite girls me growing up everybody so, was fat that's what you're saying no like no that's my that's my voice that's my rap voice <laughs> I don't know. I don't no everybody I was that. just I was always on in the front of the line like yes okay. every time you know lining up for the line in elementary school I was always in the front it felt good to you know um know that I could be a part of girls that's my size putting mm -hmm. on in music and confident as well. Mm -hmm. Y'all did records before though, right? Y'all have a I'm on Koi Project. No Angels or something? Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Got you guys. Yeah, got I'm you. on Koi Project. So y'all been collaborating. Y'all been done. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've done like been performing. She um brought me out at Rolling Loud in mm -hmm. Florida, so Miami, Florida. How is it to have that person that you can reach out to and talk to about things that's going on in the business, the industry, and they understand? We have like um we tap in here and there, but I feel I be feeling like we so busy that sometimes as an artist, you don't even really get to tap in to your emotions as you work in. Mm. Like, it be just so much. And then when you do finally have the time to, like, vent, you don't even want to. You be like, man, I got it. I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You have prep talk to yourself. That's good when you say the emotions, because I don't think people talk about that enough to come from basically doing you know not doing anything like like you know just trying to figure it out mm -hmm. the fulfilling your dream mm -hmm. and to actually having success like that's got to be a, a different wave of different waves of emotions yeah because right now where i'm at um i just think about where i came from and saying to myself what if i would have gave up because there's people that doubted me mm -hmm. and there's people that told me that i should stop but something in me told me not to stop. So, mm. like, this is, like, my glory um, journey right now. Mm. It just told me not to stop. Now, you sampled the record with Foxy, uh, yeah. Get You Home, her song. Yes. You, do you, you kick it with Inga? You kick it with Foxy at all or no? I kick it with Foxy. Yeah, yeah. Foxy don't, don't play. What? She be like, listen, do it and don't stop. And if you stop, I be like, I got you. Don't even trip about it. Mm -hmm. I got you. But she's very supportive, like... I could text her any time of the night. She hit me randomly sometimes too. Just I be needing that though, right? Because um, Brooklyn Anthem is one of the songs where Let I was. Tell you where I grew up. Yeah, sit mo. And she got, and she got the, she put the deep voice on similar to you. Yeah, yes. Brooklyn beef. Who want that? So I'm like, it's not wrong with how I am. I'm aggressive. Mm -hmm. I might be petite. Um, I'm outspoken, but I'm a Brooklyn girl. I used to be so embarrassed on how my image was as an artist because, you know, people have their opinions. Oh, she's too rough. I'm from New York City. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell y'all. Like, I don't, I don't know. I can't be anybody else but myself. So. How did you develop a relationship with Fox? Uh, She hit me up on Instagram. Wow. Yeah, she was like, yo, where you from? <laughs> I'm like, I'm from the star. She like, oh, word, that's my hood. I'm like, yeah. And then we just. Connected. Yeah, we just connected from there. I think she, she um, 
I feel like she she sees some of herself. Yes, in yep. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it makes sense because when looking at her, I was like, I get why I'm the way I am. Mm -hmm. Like she's from where I'm from. What game is she giving you? Don't the grind don't stop. Okay. Like keep going. Don't don't dull down. Uh, keep working on your craft. It's very important. Like put on for Brooklyn girls. Mm -hmm. What about your relationship with Kim as well? Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. She brought me out to Apollo for the first time ever. I've never been out there a mm -hmm. day of my life. So I'm on stage, like, looking around, observing the auditorium because I've never been there. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, oh, Kim right here. Oh, I got a mic in my hand. Oh, it's people who go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I'm performing. Um, she done sent me some flowers mm -hmm. and things like that. And she just embraced me. She embraced me a lot. And it feel good because... I'm telling you, me growing up, I didn't have that much confidence in myself. I was the only child. I didn't have mm -hmm. nobody to really speak to. Moms at work all the time, doing doubles, two jobs. So it's sometimes you, you I felt lonely. As mm -hmm. an only child, I was feeling lonely. So these two female artists from Brooklyn, and it's crazy because um, I wouldn't say that I grew up on their music, mm -hmm. but I'm from Brooklyn, so... I grew around mm -hmm. their music, you know? It was like, you had to know who Fox was. You mm -hmm. had to know who Kim was, Biggie. You just had to know. So what gave you the confidence? Like, what started instilling confidence in you? As a young um, just, I had journals, I had diaries, mm -hmm. just writing out how I felt, uh, what did I do that day, um... What do I feel I should do better for myself? Just just venting in journals. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. I would always bug my mom to get me a journal so I could just vent in them. A song like uh, uh, God Bless All the Rappers. Yeah. What inspired that? I'm a rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I got to pray harder on rappers because now that I feel I can benefit from this career, I have mm -hmm. to speak up for my community because it's a lot going on and moments happen and the moments are forget for, forgotten literally the next following week. So I wanted to bring awareness to that. Like, this is an ongoing thing. Like, don't forget. Mm -hmm. So. Did you ever feel like being a rapper was too dangerous? It's like, it's like, so, like, to chase the dream, to want to actually be one? Because you sampled Jim Jones, you know, when he was talking about, you know, being a rapper mm -hmm, is the most yeah. dangerous occupation. N no, I, I never. See, rap for me, it was just a hobby. I never thought of um, any consequences from it or benefits from it. Mm -hmm. It started with me. It was therapeutic. So when I finally got into the game and now I'm, I'm around the business, I'm starting to feel like, oh, since I'm part of this community, things could get real deep really quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't speak on it now, it's going to get buried under the rug. You think once you become a rapper, you should leave all the street stuff alone, though? Because even, even when I listen to the record, I'm like, a lot, a lot, a lot of these individuals sometimes bring that side of the game mm -hmm. into the rap world. It's like, yo, you're a professional now. You got an occupation. You make legal money. You don't got to st still be moving like you're in the street. Uh, I wouldn't say forget about the streets, though. Not forget. Like, not forget. Um, But you don't have to. Yeah, it's, it's time to pack it up. Mm -hmm. What's the mm -hmm. point? What's the point of pursuing this career to talk about your pain to still be living in it? Word. Mm -hmm. Like, like that, that just don't make no sense. So, yeah, I would say to better yourself. But, you know, you come back to give back. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you come mm -hmm. back is to give back. I think, um, sorry to go back to don't play with it, but I just want a rough neck nigga on the tongue. It's such an infamous line now. Is that what you're looking for in a man? Like, what are the things that Lola is looking for? Because now you're in a new place. I know you're not having a hard time finding somebody to come Then ask her the same deal. question. Huh? Right? Then ask her the same you question. You want a roughneck nigga on the tongue? I what got more What does that even mean? A roughneck nigga on the tongue? Do good at... Oh. At, <laughs> I can tell you. Or Jess. What does that <laughs> like, mean? What? A what, roughneck nigga on the tongue. Oral. What, what's, what you underlining and what were you circling? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you giving though. <laughs> See, I want a roughneck nigga on the tongue, like like with his. That's not. Yo, how, you, that's know not how words you know work. what? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna break the ice today. Okay. And I know a lot of people, but you're definitely right. That's that's that was the first idea of it. 
Duh. What? what was it? A lot of people don't know that, but it's yeah. word on the tongue means on your tongue. Yeah. So I'm like, wait, I'm confused. Oh my god. Now you confused. I just want a rough neck nigga on the tongue. I always thought this whole time that he just wanted semi automatic with a drum. Ask me if I'm finished. Not that whole line was about foreplay. Oh yeah. Ask me if I'm finished. Nah, bitch, I just put gun. I ain't giving out no 90 to no nigga just for fun. Are you dumb? But that's a whole foreplay line. Him giving or I just her giving on the tongue. But honestly, it goes for both. (laughs) But the first thought of it was. Yeah, but it goes for both. It's foreplay. The close whole your mouth. Verse. Close your mouth. Yo, <laughs> close the your mouth. first really bars right now. <laughs> the first four bars is foreplay. I knew it was foreplay. I just I I looked at it as receiving. What is a back and forth though? No, ask That's me. All you give I just want a rough neck yeah. nigga on, on the, the tongue. tongue. He just want a semi automatic with a drum. Ask me if I'm finished. Nah, we just begun. I ain't giving out no 90s and no niggas just for fun. Are you dumb? Like, we ain't here for no reason. Got it. <laughs> got it. You got yeah. it now? You got it now? You, you should have did the genius little breakdown. Like, I no, but I, I tried to keep it, but you know that I tried to keep it PG, you know? Mm-hmm. So, nah. yeah. Well, you did a good job of that. Can you tell us what are you looking for as a man? What is Lola <laughs> looking for? Is it just that? Um, uh, Reinsurance. Uh, I want to feel protected even if he's not around. I want a gentleman and, of course, a gangster for sure. But a former <laughs> gangster. A former... A reformed gangster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> I feel like that look and Don't Play With It, the music video was just, mwah, chef's kiss. I love the bralette, the orange under eye. like, um, And that was before you had money. I feel like like those be the best looks. What it was do the be... Girl, I made that bra. I went, I went to... um. What is that that spot called? Uh, M and J, I think. Uh, I don't know, but I went to a trimming. It was called, it's like a trimming store of just different things. I brought patches. I brought some fabric glue. I had a denim. That bra was like a bikini uh, denim bra. I I put the patches on there. That's why I had like the taxi and state of liberty and all that on there. And um, and then the shorts was like pants. I cut them. And then it was May, so you know when New York once it was cold, <laughs> but once May come, New Yorkers be like, "Oh yeah, let me put on put on my summer fit." So that's why I look like I'm hot, and everybody else look like they. <laughs> <laughs> that's your language. Now she's speaking your language. I know. I love the creativity. Now I look like dope. you make clothes too. Yeah, I knit. I knit. See, I, I mean, I get that from my mom though. Like, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just make this from scratch, and then I'm on a budget. Like, I ain't got, I got some old pants that I don't wear no more. Cut them up, put them into shorts. You don't do that now though. I she still got, she do came it in with yeah. the custom Ava Rex. Oh, the, but see, I right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, but I'm small. I can't. It swallows me. Mm-hmm. We like it. We're here for it. Yeah, you know. I mean, I still, <laughs> but no, like I, I still. I shop anywhere and mm-hmm. then just make it look good. Like I'm not really caught off materialistic things for sure. I mean I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like mm-hmm. materialistic things, but I'm not the I'm not the artist where if I don't have a particular certain name brand to wear or anything, mm-hmm. I'll come in the studio or come here with sweats and a white beater on and I'll be straight. Are you people proud of you? Very proud. Okay, that's what it is. Very proud. Very proud. More than me. Shit. Well, salute. <laughs> salute, salute to your team, eighty and them, because yes. they, they work hard. So salute to everybody over there. And salute to you, Lola Book. And salute to Lola. I really want that to be Lola the new Book. name. Lola I Book. like Book. that. Yeah. It, it is just the beginning. That's just the beauty the of it. That's right. Yes, it's just the beginning. I'm just grateful to be here. So I haven't called me since that first record, too. By the way, he ain't called me no more. Oh. Do you feel pressure? That's a lot. That's a lot. He called me every damn day. He called me every damn day. Do I feel pressure? No, because I my expectations for don't play with it wasn't what it is right now. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I felt good about the record, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know that the record was gonna be a hit. I thought it was just gonna be legendary in the city of New York City. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not pressured. Mm -hmm. I've been putting out music for so long, and Mm -hmm. the song went crazy the next two years so if i put out something today and it don't go crazy the next six months i ain't tripping about it because i know the next two years it could it could so i got that blessing to know like that is possible so i'll be taking it easy and i just keep it as 
ther- therapy for me. It's just therapeutic. There you go. What well, does your mom say now? My mom's so excited. She's, oh my God. I be like, Ma, okay, it's not that serious. She be like, girl, is you crazy? You is a celebrity. You is so, you is a star. You're talented. And I be like, oh man, come on, Ma. But she was, she was, my mom's was down from the start. Like, she's the reason I resigned from my job. Wow. She's the reason I got the job. No, 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 no. See, that oh, okay. That was my first job. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the last job that I had before I pursued this rap career was um, residential aid at, the, at a shelter. Oh, wow. Right, and right, my right. mom was a supervisor. Well, I'm a shelter baby. So mm-hmm. we, she worked her positions in the shelter. I ended up being old, um, old enough to work in the shelter. She got me a job there. And I remember coming from coming home from studio. I would come home from studio like six in the morning and I had to be to work at eight. So I get in six, I get ready, get shower and dress, no sleep, leave out seven, get there for eight. I had to take a bus to two trains. Job was in Queens. Mm. And she would just I, I could I could tell like she felt she felt for me. She like, listen, I don't know. If you feel like you want to resign from the job, you can. Like you got my full support. And that's all I needed to hear because I'm like, listen, my moms don't play. She got me this job, and who am I to say I don't want it no more because I want to pursue something else? Mm-hmm. Wow. But she was the reason why I resigned. But I ain't burned that bridge. I resigned from my job. I didn't quit. Mm. I resigned. But also, too, that gives you real purpose and intention because, like you said, you was a shelter baby. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you 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 know what those kids are lacking and what they need. Now you got the resources. You can go back and provide. And go back and provide. Oh, yes. That's my plan for sure. Well, Dennis's daughter is out right now. Make sure y'all go get it. And we appreciate you for joining us, Lola. Big Thank Lola. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. It's Lola Brooke. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.